Well, the big crowd here at the Meadowlands thinks that Mac Lobel is going to end it all right here with a victory in his second heat of the afternoon. He's one to nine on the tote board, and the only other horse who could stop the Hamiltonian competition and be the champ is Napolitano. He's six to one. Ellie, is there a race strategy for John Campbell and Mac Lobel? I think at this point in time, Dave, there's only one strategy. Go to the front. When you're the best, you don't want to be involved in any traffic be on the front end. The last time this horse was in heat racing, it was at Vernon Downs in the Founders Gold Cup. He was scratched out of the second heat. Stan, you were there. Why was he scratched? That was prudent trainer owner management. They just didn't want to go two trips with him that day. The race was 160000 This one is a million dollars. They had the Beacon course coming up intervening, which he won. And now this race, oh, I think it was a wise decision on their part, Dave. And now it's time for the call of the second heat of the Hamiltonian. We go to the top of the stands and track and announcer Tom Durkin. Tom? for the second and perhaps deciding heat of the Hamiltonian 1987 and uh, they're off and Waikiki Beach leaves quickly and Mac Lobel, Mac Lobel now takes the lead as the field moves into the turn and Napolitano has the pocket early, Waikiki Beach is parked out third into the turn and Cotton Hanover has come away trotting fourth, the gap of three back to Besiege down the outside toward the inside at Spotlight Lobel who is now racing in sixth position on the outside, Action Factor is now racing seventh, followed by Skywatch Lobel, then fire in the back, go get lost, and see Lewis Lomont. The first quarter, 27 and four, fifth seconds, and the pressure coming to Mac Lobel now from the outside, Waikiki Beach coming right after him, Waikiki Beach. And Mac Lobel, they hook up in a speed duel down the back stretch, and Napolitano is stalking them. Third, then a gap of three lengths on the inside. It's Cotton Hanover racing in fourth. And alongside him, besieged his fifth. And here's the half mile. 55 and three fifth seconds of blazing pace as the field moves into the turn. And it's still Mac Lobel holding on to the lead. Waikiki Beach still pressuring him from the outside. Napolitano, a perfect trip so far. He's just in behind the dueling leaders in third position. And besieged is poised on the outside. Now racing fourth. Go get lost is coming three wide in his bid for the lead now. Waikiki Beach has gone on a break, and that leaves Mac Lobel with a three-length lead as they come to three quarters. Here's that time, 125 and three. At the top of the lane, it's Mac Lobel, the leader in the Hamiltonian by three lengths. And Napolitano is trying to catch him as they come into the final eight, and the others are far back. It's Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. Mac Lobel in front now by four or five. Napolitano is never going to catch him. The others are far back. Here is a brilliant trotter and a brilliant performance. Mac Lobel has won the Hamiltonian in 1.53 and three, a sensational time, a new record. And Mac Lobel further emphasizes his greatness. A fifth of a second off the world record, and he earned his Hamiltonian from start to finish. It was Napolitano that had it all his own way, and for Mac Lobel, no lucky trip. In fact, no luck at all, just power and speed and balance and beauty. In fact, these two heats this afternoon, 154 and 153 and three here in the second heat, the two fastest heats in the history of the sport. And watch here as John Campbell takes his first Hamiltonian with this horse of greatness, Mac Lobel, and the dream comes true this afternoon for those around this great trotter. Mac Lobel, the winner of the 1987 Hamiltonian. And we'll be back with more from the Meadowlands after these messages. We're back at the Meadowlands where Mac Lobel, in the central moment of his racing career, has decimated his competition with a show of acceleration unequaled, not just here at the Meadowlands, but in the history of racing one horse against another. Let's take a look at the official prices of the Hamiltonian. Mac Lobel pays 220, 210, and 210. Napolitano, 240, 210. Spotlight Lobel, third. $2.10 to show. And in the official order of finish, top to bottom, we had Go Get Lost finishing fourth. Cotton Hanover was fifth. Besieged was sixth. Skywatch Lobel seventh. Action Factor eighth. C. Lewis Lomont. And Waikiki Beach was tenth. And now to the winner's circle and our colleague Alan Kirschenbaum with a happy guy. I'm standing here with John Campbell, who has just won the 1987 Hamiltonian with Mac Lobel. John, what did, did you learn anything else about Mac Lobel that you didn't know before? 
he's even better than I thought he was. He wasn't himself today. His feet are stinging him a little bit, and he still won a tremendous race. He, he uh, just showed how much grit he has because he, he definitely wasn't as sound as feet were stinging him as he's been. Chuck Sylvester told us between heats that you suggested an equipment change for McLobel to put pads in between his shoes. John Campbell getting a kiss from wife Paula. Um, do you think that helped him in the second heat? Definitely. It was Chucky's decision to put them in. He thought of the full pads, and it definitely helped him. He was much better. Uh, just till the last little bit, he, they just got stinging him so much he went off stride at the wire. But he uh, it definitely made a big difference in him. It was a good decision. Okay, John, we're going to go to the replay right now and take a look at Mac Lobel. You sent him to the front early, and the challenges were very quick in coming. Did you expect them to come at you that early? Well, I was hoping that they'd find holes, anybody that did left, and unfortunately for me, they didn't. I, and I didn't want to let uh, Waikiki Beach go because I thought Billy would come tip back out and he'd be in front and I'd have, have me sit in third and he'd be in control. I know you said b before the heat that you were hoping you didn't have to use Mac as hard in the second heat. You certainly had to use him even harder. Even harder. He was much better the second heat. Uh, Chuck put the full pads on him and the track wasn't quite as hard and it made a big difference to him. He, uh, he felt real safe until just the last little bit, but uh, he turned in a tremendous performance. Did you expect Napolitano to give you maybe a little bit of a, more of a tussle at the end of the mile? Well, I really didn't know. I didn't uh, know what to expect. He, he had got an easier first heat than I did, so I really didn't know what to expect. Mac felt real good at the head of the stretch, so I asked him to trot, and it was hoping to open up enough daylight that uh, he wouldn't be able to catch him. You've won almost every other classic race in the sport, but the Hamiltonian eluded you to this year. How does it feel? Uh, it's a great feeling. I think it's my biggest thrill. Just from uh, the horse's standpoint, what a performance he put in. It uh, just shows his grit. You said before the race he's the best horse you've ever driven. Do you feel any differently now? I just feel that he's more than ever that he's the best horse I've ever driven. He just proved it, and uh, he overcomes something that all great horses have to win in when they're not 100%. Also in the winner's circle with me is Lou Guida, the principal owner of the One More Time Stable. Lou, you've been associated mainly with great pacers over the year. Uh, how does it feel to have a great trotter like Mac Lobel? Unbelievable. It's an unbelievable feeling. There's probably very few no owners who've won as many big races in the sport as you have. Does it ever start to wear off the thrill of winning a great race? I don't know if it starts to wear off, but after winning the Hamiltonian, I'm beginning to think I'm not going to push my luck too much further. But we've had a great season. I've enjoyed it very much. Chuck's did a great job, and John is just a master at driving. And the horse did a lot himself, too. Congratulations to both Lou Guida, John Campbell trainer Chuck Sylvester, and to Mac Lobel, a great winner of the Hamiltonian. Let's go back to Dave Johnson. And can you imagine? He did it, and he wasn't even 100%. Ellie, at the beginning of the show, you said you were looking for records. Did you find enough? Oh, I found exactly what I wanted to see. He established two stake records, won the second leg of the trotting triple crown, and he did it, like you said, not 100%. There's not many horses that can win a championship race like that and not be 100%. I think he's the best trotter I've ever seen. For the past 22 years, Stan Bergstein has been publishing his uh, experimental ratings. He did so in March of this year. And Stan, where did you put Mac Lobel back in March? I rated him on top with a mile in one minute and 53 seconds. Pretty close. Well, he's not done yet. He still has the great mile tracks at Springfield, Illinois, Ducoin, Illinois, Lexington, Kentucky, if he chooses to race there. And I had some final thoughts of, I was very much impressed. That big S on Sylvester's silks, that stands for Superman, not <laughs> Sylvester. And he ought to make a smaller size one, too, for John Campbell. As far as the G that in my equation, that's grit. He, um, uh, this horse has inherited the stamina and the grit of his sire, Mystic Park, who almost died with Potomac fever, lost all four hooves, and came back to be a great sire. As far as stud prospects, he's an outcross, brilliant prospect for his co-owner, Ed Mullen, who owns Fairwinds Farm at Cream Ridge, New Jersey, where he will stand. And finally, Charisma, Jake LaBell was supposed to have been the horse. Mac LaBell turns out to be the charismatic champion. They are not related. They both come from Lana LaBell Farm in New Jersey. Well, it was an exciting afternoon of sport. Lots of records set, lots of action, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing greatness on the racetrack. This is Dave Johnson for Tom Durkin, who called the races, Alan Kirschenbaum and my partners here, Ellie Sarama and Stan Bergstein, saying so long from the Meadowlands.